So a seismic experiment is very much like uh, what bats and dolphins do when they do echolocation. So we're doing something somewhat similar. We're not as good at it as bats are, but you know we do the best we can. Bats have had millions of years to evolve this technique to absolute perfection, and we're newcomers at the game. But what we do is we also set off a small, make a small uh, sound, and that sound travels through the ice now uh, instead of through the air the way it does for a bat or through the water the way it does for a dolphin. For us, our sound travels through the ice, hits the bottom of the ice, which is our target, our prey, if you will, hits the bottom of the ice, Ref that, uh, that sound energy reflects off the bottom of the ice and comes back up and we have these small instruments called geophones uh, that are like our ears. They listen for that echo. This is the part that is uh, not quite so exciting physically or, or adventurous physically, but in many ways intellectually this is the most exciting part. This is when I get to analyze my data. In the field I don't have the ability to really get the big picture. I'm spending all day drilling holes, putting geophones out, setting off explosives. Here I can put all my data together and make these nice maps. So this is what we, uh, what we end up with, <clears throat> a cross section through a small part of the Antarctic ice sheet. Uh, this is a what we call a seismic section and you can interpret it this way. This is the top of the ice up over here and this is about five miles from left to right. And this is the top of the ice, this is where we set our charges off and the energy from there travels down, 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 hits the bottom, comes back up. In this case it's almost uh, two miles round trip. When it gets back up to the surface our geophones record that energy and amount of time that it takes and that's what we've displayed over here. In some places the energy takes a little bit longer to bounce off the bottom so we know that the ice is thicker, the bottom of the ice is deeper. In some places the energy comes back more quickly and so we know the ice is less thick there, it's a little thinner. And it's that kind of information that we need to be able to interpret uh, uh, what the ice sheet is going to do in the future. And that's what, that's what I do, I make maps like this.